Well, after months of refusing to appoint a special committee to probe Benghazi, the Speaker of the House today decided to take the investigation to a new level with this statement. Americans learned this week that the Obama administration is so intent on obstructing the truth about Benghazi that it is even willing to defy subpoenas issued by the standing committees of the People's House. In light of these new developments, the House will vote to establish a new select committee to investigate the attack, provide the necessary accountability, and ensure justice is finally served. So that will move forward, according to the Speaker of the House. The reaction from the State Department was pretty quick. Well, everything if, that this committee would look at has already been looked at ad nauseum but, by multiple committees. Okay, but if no one What's the point? But if no one did anything wrong or inappropriate, what is the harm in doing The in amount having, of man hours and taxpayer uh, dollars. We no no, this is this is why it matters though. I'm actually answering your question. I know you okay. don't believe me, but well, no, I, the amount I of man hours it, and taxpayer it. dollars that go in to all of this is incredibly uh, uh, time consuming for our folks here and at other agencies as well. We are committed to doing it because it's important, but when we've already done it. With that, let's bring in an expanded panel tonight. Fox News Chief Washington Correspondent James Rosen, Jason Riley, Editorial Board Member of the Wall Street Journal, Julie Pace, White House Correspondent for the Associated Press, and Syndicated Columnist Charles Krauthammer. James, you are also our resident historian. Uh, so select committees. What does this enable the House to do? And what is different? Dude, <laughs> it, it had to be done. It had to be done. It had to be done. Um, look, this is an important development. Um, for the first time now, in two years, uh, we have this profound and multi-dimensional event in Benghazi, kind of the telltale heart of the Obama presidency. And it's now going to be institutionalized as a story. Um, for the first time, there's going to be a centralized fact-finding body wielding subpoena power uh, and most likely live streaming testimony from key witnesses. Um, of course, there will be a concerted effort to delegitimize this committee, and you'll hear it routinely described as the GOP-controlled Benghazi Committee. Um, and unflattering comparisons will inevitably be made with the Senate Watergate Committee, which will be held up as some mythic body that was marked by judiciousness and bipartisanship. In fact, the Senate Watergate Committee was a very partisan creature. There's every reason to believe this may be similar. Um, but, you know, Britt Hume, who has been here in the Capitol since the early 70s, famously once said to me, and this tells you something about how hashtag this town has evolved. James, nobody ever referred to the Senate Watergate Committee as the Democrat-controlled Senate Watergate Committee. That kind of journalism didn't happen until 1980, when the Republicans retook the Senate at that time. We actually didn't know we were going to have imitations, too. I mean, it's a, Listen, yeah, you did. It's, it's yeah, a, you did. It's a benefit. <laughs> um, I yield the balance of my time. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a whole bunch of them. Jason, uh, to James' point, uh, the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid came out with a statement quickly after this, saying Republicans care more about defending billionaires like the Koch brothers and trying to rekindle debunked right-wing conspiracy theories than raising the minimum wage or ensuring women receive equal pay for equal work. Broken record. That's what he sounds like on that. But he, here we have, um, it looks like the White House uh, lied about an episode with direct bearing on U.S. national security. And it looks like they did it because they thought the truth might jeopardize Obama's reelection. If that is not grounds for going forward with a select committee, I don't know what is. I think this is long overdue. Obviously, it'll depend. On, on the details here, the scope of the committee, what kind of reach it has, just appointing one or, or, or selecting one won't, um, won't get the job done, but it is an, an excellent first step that's long overdue. Others have called for it, like Congressman Frank Wolf. Um, so I, I'm, I'm glad, Banner. I think Banner's made the right call here. Julie. Well, I would say a couple of things. To, to James's point on the committee itself, I think it is going to be very difficult to try to make this a bipartisan committee, but I think that Republicans are going to have to try as much as possible to add a bipartisan flavor to this. They also, I think, have to be very clear about the purpose of the committee. Sometimes in congressional investigations, the actual mission of the committee gets lost and you end up with just a lot of documents and a lot of testimony and it's unclear what you're actually getting after. So I think that they need to be very targeted in what they're doing. And from the White House perspective, it's clear now that when the White House said we put out everything we had, that they didn't actually put out everything they had. So they have a real incentive if they want to put this behind them to actually now release everything that they have. And is there frustration in that White House briefing room? I asked Mara this. Um, 
about some of these non-answer answers? And is the White House working the refs behind the scenes on frustration that? in the press corps? Yeah. Well, there's always frustration in the no, press but corps. I mean, but yeah, about no, about this issue, there definitely is. I mean, I think that um, we we give the White House. The benefit of the doubt when there is an answer that they are being honest with us doesn't mean that we we think that what they're saying is is the right answer or the wrong answer but we believe that they are at least trying to be honest with us and and there is you know questions in this when they say that this email was not directly about Benghazi it was about the broader problems in the region okay maybe but they were talking about talking points involving Susan Rice, which is at the heart of this matter. So I think that, that they're trying to, you know, be too cute by half on that. And she was going on Sunday shows where they were all asking you about Benghazi. Charles. It was all about Benghazi. And even if some of this protest language applied to other demonstrations, she would never have been on all five shows if it had only been a demonstration in Cairo where nobody was hurt and nobody was killed. It was, she was on because of Benghazi. And this memo is important. It triggered all this for two reasons. A, it was hidden for a year and a half. It should have been out there right away because it's a connection, a direct connection between the White House and Susan Rice and the fable she told. And the second reason is, of course, in the content of it, they had al always been saying Susan Rice got all her information from the CIA. This is clearly influence from the White House. The only question I have is why did Boehner wait until now? But now that we are going to be doing this, I think Trey Gowdy ought to be the chairman. He's a prosecutor. He's a terrific, smart congressman from South Carolina. Right. And he, the, and, and the rules are they ought to choose the members of this committee, or at least the Republican members, the ones who pledge never to make a speech and never to make a declarative statement, only to ask questions. Uh, and they should have a trained prosecutor, as in the Watergate a committee, to lead all the witnesses through the questions and not a round robin of congressional uh, interrogation speeches and, um, and, and uh, popping off. That's what's been wrong with all of these previous hearings. If it is a targeted hearing just with questions so it's a clean inquiry, it will then have to be respected even by the mainstream media. Uh, Congressman Gowdy, by the way, will be on Greta coming up. Uh, James, is this politically at all dangerous for Republicans? Well, it's obviously taking place in a midterm election cycle. The uh, Democrats will make an effort to uh, talk about the middle class and jobs and the war on women and so forth, and they will point to an exercise like this as, uh, as, as we've already heard from Senator Reid, that it's sort of engaging in the debunking of, of or engaging in inflating now debunked conspiracy theorizing. So that's the danger for it. But and the track record of these committees is what? Well, you know, the Senate Watergate Committee now in history looks like it was successful because the president ultimately resigned. Later committees haven't produced that unique result, so they, they sort of suffer by comparison. But this committee, there are dangers for the, for the Democrats as well, including obviously continued disclosure and quite potentially for Hillary Clinton, who may well be the Democratic nominee in 2016. I, I think Congress owes it to the four perished Americans to do this. Yes, we've had committees look into this, but they have not been well coordinated. There has been, frankly, a little too much grandstanding. And I think a select committee would, would be above that in some sense. And provided it, it has the scope and the reach to do what's necessary, I think it could put forward a definitive record of what went on, and, and we owe that to these Americans. Julie, it is tough to tell the story without spending a lot of time laying it all out. Uh, so that people get it. Is that one of the challenges, do you think, for um, media who cover it or don't cover it? I, th I think that is one of the challenges, but I also think, uh, you know, to James's first point, that what the select committee does is it provides sort of, a, once this gets going, a daily drumbeat, and that makes it harder to, to not cover it. And so I think that sometimes you end up in these periods where you're not actually getting anything new and so it's harder for media to, you know, make the claim for why we're writing a story if there's nothing new. Certainly, there has been coverage of this latest email and there's been coverage of the select committee and I think there will be going forward. Although today in the Rose Garden, no questions about Benghazi, even though the right. select committee was, uh, was already out there. Last word. 
it's got to be very targeted. It can be three questions. Why were they so unprepared? Second, where was the president and the secretary on the night, hour by hour, on the night all this was happening? And while the fate of the ambassador was still unknown. And lastly, how did we get the fable? Who in the White House, above the level of Rhodes, was involved in the talking points? And it takes a long time? It will take time. Uh, these, these committees typically can go on for a year or two. Okay, panel, thank you very much. Much. Next up, the Friday Lightning Round.